Oscar Out Loud is a weekly podcast about San Francisco real estate from the Jackson Fuller team, San Francisco Realtors since 2002. Show notes with links are at jacksonfuller.com. At the end of the day, one of the things I think I've definitely heard you say is that from the, the buyer perspective, for this to be good and effective, you got to you got to find a place where you're listening. Right. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. Yes. It's, it's natural to come to this with a, a lot of concern and kind of preconceived ideas of what could go wrong. And, you know, we all research the internet for, you know, every horrible thing that could happen, but until you can kind of put all of that aside, even for just a little bit of time, you know, and listen to it from a different perspective is probably one of the most important parts or things that a buyer gets out of a home inspection. Absolutely. Um, I don't think there's too many buyers I've met that haven't done some degree of homework prior to me getting there. So again, by the time I've arrived, they're already well into the real estate transaction. The offer's been accepted. And in order to generate a list of questions, they had to get that from somewhere. So they've done their homework. But it also brings up a lot of anxiety, like, oh my God, did we miss a question? Is there something we should be asking him or not. And that's really a part of what we're providing is let me help guide you. You know, a good at some point we'll get around the water because that is the big talking point. So let's go there. Well, let's, let's go, go there. Water. Okay. So if anything bad is going to happen, it's usually somehow water related. So I like to break water down into three types or three ways of looking at it. So one is just rain. It's going to come down. It's going to land on the roof, go down the sides of the building. Okay, the second or second part of the water is where does it go once it gets to the ground? Mm-hmm. Now, San Francisco is invariably all hills. It's going to be coming at you one direction or another. So you want to look at, uh, is there any drainage or something to collect this? Or does it just sort of go around the building or shoot through it? What happens? Lastly, then, is going to be um, subterranean water. So what will happen is, especially after a long winter, there's a point at which the hillside soils become saturated with water. And it's going to have a tendency to just come up. It's it's referred to as a hydrostatic pressure. Now, concrete is not waterproof. A lot of people think it really is, but it's not. It allows moisture to transpire back and forth through it. So if you take, for example, an average Avenue's home, and you have a big open garage and, you know, the concrete slab and the foundations, there's moisture coming through there all the time. might not be much, but as soon as it does, it just simply evaporates and goes into the air and you don't see it. But as soon as you add floorings and sheetrock and carpets and things that will hold water, now it's stuck. So this is why when you're looking at remodeling or, well, new construction, you would have some type of drainage in there. Um, but if you're going to remodel or renovate an existing building, you have to do something to address water. And, and it's all three. Most people miss the last. It just doesn't occur to them. And this is where it will come up more often than not. You know, leaky roof, I got it. Or, you know, yeah, we don't have the best drainage. But it's a developed sub area. And so for those not from San Francisco, it's important to remember that we don't have basements. A lot of places do, but we don't. So a little bit of a play on words. What we have instead are areas that are at or somewhat below grade. So a bit silly. Basement ish. Right? Basement ish. But if you're going to develop the underside of the house, part of that job should be making a provision to prevent water from coming in. So it could be a combination of drains or drainage pipe some sort of membranes, there's coatings and sealers. So there's a whole myriad of procedures that can be done, but it's when it just doesn't occur to someone or they think, oh, that's not important, I'm not gonna do it. Then you get six months in a really good winter and now we've got a funky, nasty smelling sub area, that's an issue. So that's something that I would like to share just so that people, when they are doing renovations, don't be afraid to spend a little money where you're not gonna see it. It's gonna save you a lot of grief down the road. Definitely. And while we don't have basements, you know, these areas often come into play when houses are built on, on grade, on right. hill, you know, and you've got some chunk of it that is essentially a basement. You know, right. It's like built right. back into the hill and you've got, in addition to, you know, just being below grade, you've got all those other things you described in terms of the water pressure against it and, you know, water moving around and just being present. Absolutely. Water is the same thing with retaining walls. When you have a height differential between yards and they've dug it out, you need something to hold back the soil. And that's where retaining walls come in. Well, when you get into an old property and the retaining wall's cracked and it's no longer plumb or straight and starting to crack or bow, the culprit is water. It's, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's the dirt. No, it's the wet dirt or the water that's doing all the damage. And so same thing, water can be pretty amazing at what it can do. 
and water it, can get any place, right? It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's it, if the phone's ever going to ring, it, it's more often than not something water related. Definitely. And that's why I try and focus on that. So what's also important, I think, with this is if we go back to people's emotions and the stress of real estate transaction, it's putting things into perspective. And if we kind of wander off track a little bit, if you think about each inspector is going to have their own particular style. Some are very quiet. They don't talk at all. I like to talk. So, you know, I'm the no. other side. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, where are you from? You know, well, again. The, the podcast podcast with the silent home inspector did not go well. <laughs> Right. It's kind of, you ever notice they don't broadcast golf on the radio? <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing. So everyone's different. So what I like to do is try and get everyone engaged. Let's get in on it. You, you are dealing with emotions. Again, and it doesn't matter. Even even realtors, again, they're people. And sometimes you get one that as you're having a conversation, something will spook them or get them concerned. And they'll keep interjecting. And what they're really doing is trying to answer objections as you're going. And sometimes I'll have to just say, look, let me finish. And then take some notes while we go. But let me finish. And then, yeah, we'll sit down and go over this stuff. So if you have any questions on that. But if they're constantly interjecting or, again, having a homeowner there yeah. when you're doing the inspection, it's the same thing. And, um, well, good example of this. So I'll share this with you was, um, did a pre-inspection on a house. And when I uh, got there, it was raining. So leaking a little bit under the entry stairs and from the light well, which are two obvious spots, not uncommon. And the seller was really agitated that I mentioned it in the report. They said, well, leakage is pretty important. I can't not talk about this. And he said, well, um, the stairs were going to get caulked, and I just didn't get to it in time. And as far as the light well goes, I have a guy, Ramon, who shows up once a year, and he has a long stick that he can stick out the window and clear that drain in the light well. He says, I want you to put that in the report. That Ramon shows up with a well, stick? Well, right. And I a said, long stick. Not so, any stick. Well, I repeated. I said, you want me to recommend that they have a Ramon with a stick that shows up <laughs> once a year? And he, he's like, okay, you're just being facetious. And I said... Listen, not everyone's going to do this. Somebody might actually call a roofer and have it done right. And the stairs, rather than you caulking them, why don't we get a, a terrazzo contractor on it? Let them do it so it's done right. And he, he's kind of backed down a little bit. But, you know, again, I'm not accusing you of having ugly kids. I just can't do that. I, you know, I've got to be fair to everyone. That is another good point. So being fair to all parties involved and the property, how do you do that? So a good example of this is if you're paying me, to do an inspection, I'm working for you. I want to give you everything I can, and I want to be fair to you. But if we're inspecting a 130-year-old building, and I compare everything in that building to brand new construction, that report's not going to make any sense, because I'm going to say everything's wrong. So I've got to be fair to the building as well. And it's a fine line between the two. And that's where I like to put it into perspective. So I could say, ideally, it would have been nice to have modern concrete, but we don't. We've got some older concrete on the foundation, and parts of it are starting to become brittle. And there's a point at which you're not going to have much choice to either repair or, uh, or replace it. And so that now is, like, all right, I got foundation problems. So we've got someone's attention. And then I'll go into, well, what were your plans? Were you going to dig this out? Are you going to make develop summer? Are you going to do anything? And sometimes they'll say, no, I'm not going to do anything at all. But I still want to talk about the foundation. I'll say, well, there are options. If, if it's a monetary concern, you don't have to do it all at once. Do one side. Wait a few seasons. You know, let the bank recover and do a little bit more and go with that. Foundations these days, too, more often than not, can be replaced in five and ten foot sections. You don't have to do the whole thing in one fell swoop. And there's contractors, they just start on one end, work their way around, and when you get to the other end, they're done. And they don't have to start over. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. You're Unless done. it took them a really long time. It's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. No, oh, that's right. You're, well, that is sometimes, you know, a house is a living, breathing entity. And even I get tired of painting my house, and subsequently I have some deferred maintenance too. So, but you do have to keep doing it. Yeah. One of the things I've learned from <coughs> observing home inspections over the years is that just from a contractor's point of view, you look at some everyday materials in a completely different way than we think about them. And my favorite one is paint. Yeah. Because we think of paint as color right and paint to you is something totally right, right. different so again one of my uh, davisms would be um most people are painting is something you do because the house is starting to look kind of tatty whereas for me paint is technically a vehicle for keeping water out so it's really all back to water back to water so it's all about the preparation it's not just slapping on paint anybody can do that but you have to whoops 
come out and, you know, power wash the house and have the guys scrape any loose bits off and pick and poke and get everything ready. Then you have the correct type of primer that's going to bond with the wood. You do all the caulking. And now when you put the paint on, it does what it's designed to do, which is to keep water out. So And look fabulous. And look good. So for you, paint is something that's fun to do because the house looks tatty. For me, it's a vehicle for keeping water out, and it comes in a wide range of colors. <laughs> the best waterproofer around especially on the old buildings i mean that's it in the old days they didn't it's not uncommon you just have wood siding over framing that's it maybe if you were lucky there was a layer of paper under it but there's really not much and then compared to new construction now there's moisture barriers wind barriers there's flashing details weeps there's oh, water planes uh, counter flashings i mean it, it just goes on and on and the interesting thing is it's fun to know it's all there but you can't see any of it once the building's done so if something's not done correctly, more often than not, the only way you're going to find out is when it fails. There's some sort of a leak. There was that tragic case with the deck over mm-hmm. in East Bay. Yeah. And what they had said at the end was that water got trapped during the construction process and it just sat there and caused a problem. That does make a lot of sense to me, but that's my opinion on that. But nonetheless, newer wood, newer method of construction, and only a handful of years later and it's, it's failed, whereas with an old building... They just kind of keep on chugging along. For the most part, yeah, they really do. They do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of old school. Yeah. it's um. There's a little more maybe craftsmanship. Yeah. There's – um, well, they're all different too. Do um, you ever notice there's a point where you just get a certain feeling when you walk in? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like something feels really good. I like this one. Or something's off here. I can't quite tell what it is. Yep. I'm just getting a bad – some kind of a bad vibe. What is it? And you don't want that to influence you one way or another. Again, I've got to think of it as I'm just going off my sheet. Just look at this, make your notes, you know, but um, you do get certain feelings. Your spidey sense. Yeah. I think for me, it's stuff where I'll go into a house and the kitchen has been remodeled since 1970. You can almost hear the Brady Bunch music theme in the background. And at the same time, as awful as it looks, I know someone was really proud of this kitchen. It made someone really happy. They're gone now. Yeah. They've moved on. There's a, yeah. I'm thinking of one house in particular when you say kind of like that bad vibe spidey sense. Yeah. Um, and it was over in District 9, the very, very, very long escrow. And everyone, every single contractor we took to that house, the, it had it was, had been totally done, right? The upstairs yeah. had been flipped. But then we got down to the lower level and it was built on grade and that's where you could see, you know, how it was all put together. And it was just like... Yeah, that's well, that happens too. Unfortunately, there's people out there that um, really don't have any pride in craftsmanship and no cut corners. And it, it, it just ruins it for everybody. It makes it hard for the inspector. It's most unpleasant for anyone else involved, especially whoever's buying it. Yeah. And you just pray that you're able to see all this stuff ahead of time. But those luckily are far and few between. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and in they're there. 15 years, I can get one. For me, I think, again, so the spidey sense, um, I think this comes from being a trim carpenter uh, because I used to do a lot of high end stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'll come in and I can't comment on craftsmanship. That's not part of the home inspection itself. But if I start seeing things that look like, yeah, they really did pick a lesser cost option on everything and the wall finishes aren't very good, it does make me look closer. Like, okay, what else did what they else cut did a they corner? cheap out on? Yeah, let's have a good look and see what we can find here. And, there's a few that are known. I can't say any addresses on air, but um, we know <laughs> we know where they are. Yeah. And there's always the tells. Uh, when you get to the open house and every window is open, okay, why? Was there an unpleasant odor of some sort, or do you just like fresh air? What's going on with that? I love oxygen. Yeah. It's um, delicious. I've, I've had clients say that if there are candles burning in an open house, that they're, they just uh, walk out because they're suspicious of Yeah. Odors. I mean – Attempting to be right covered. if there's candles burning, is it an open house or a seance? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, what kind of staging is candles? That's that's an odd one. Um, <laughs> the what's another one? Uh, dehumidifiers. If I see dehumidifiers, then I have to think, okay, why? Because yeah. not every home has those. Why would you? Yeah, yeah, so that that's kind of a tell. Can I ask you one more final question? Yeah. I, I don't know if you can answer this. 
Um, how come we don't have plastic pipes in San Francisco? Oh, good question. Okay. Each county is different, as we know, with code compliance. And San Francisco has a strong objection to plastic waste piping. So with plumbing in general, just so everyone understands, there's two types of plumbing. There's water coming in and water going out. So when it comes in, it's usually in copper pipe. It goes to all your faucets and fixtures. And when you're done with it, the only thing taking it out is the drain pipes. And those are the ones that are bigger in diameter. And mostly they're cast iron, galvanized. Some are even copper. But plastic pipe is, it's affordable. It's a cost affordable option because it doesn't cost as much to manufacture or purchase. You glue it together rather than cutting mechanically, fastening them. And San Francisco has just had a strong objection. So what the contractors would assume is that it was probably something to do with uh, perhaps a union influence. In other words, we're making things a little bit too easy. Um, I was on a job many years ago, and the part of the building I'm working on, we've got it at that rough-in point. We're ready for the rough-in inspections, and the city inspectors come out. Everything's going good until the plumbing inspector shows up. He notices on the other side of the house there's plastic piping. They said, yes, but that was already there. I'm not working on that part of the house. I don't want you to look at that. I want you to look at what I pulled permits for. And he says, no, that's not what we're doing today. I'm looking at everything. He says, I want all that changed before I sign you up. And I said, and this never goes well because I've got to convince the client, I'm not making this up. This is what you get. And, and again, even city inspectors, they can be user friendly. They can be very unpleasant. So while I was there, I said, okay, tell you what, look, I'll go explain this to the clients. I said, but... I'm dying to know all these years we've heard about plastic pipe. Why do you sit San Francisco inspectors not like it? And he said, well, it's a fuel source. It's flammable, whereas metal pipe won't burn. And I zoomed up right in his face and I said, you do realize the house is made out of wood. <laughs> and at that point, I could see him like inhaling, getting ready for his diatribe. And I just said, stop. <laughs> We're good. Let me go talk to the clients. I'll call you when you're ready. We'll have you come out and you can see metal pipe. So it, it, logic does not always apply wow. to this stuff. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, truth be told, I don't miss construction. I really don't. It, it was hard. It's grueling. You're dealing with a lot. Home inspection for me is fun. I actually enjoy it. It's, I get to look at a lot of different properties, short-term relationships. Um, I've been on jobs that have lasted a year or more when I was a contractor. And now when I'm with a buyer, two hours tops. You, you mentioned that you're, you know, misconstruction. As an aside, my brother-in-law was a writer and editor in his 20s and 30s, and then he got into construction in his 30s and 40s. And he said, "I did that backwards." <laughs> yeah, it's it's very hard on the body. Yeah, um, you he's think, in grad school now to yeah. do something else. But building things is fun because when you're done, I get to see what I built. Yeah, and if you have some kind of a office job where. You don't get that mental or emotional gratification where I've completed a widget. Now I get to go make another widget. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing there on that end. And some people are content with that. Others are not. But that's one thing construction did give you. It was fun. Pride and craftsmanship. A tangible result. Absolutely. A tangible result. Well, there's one thing I wanted to share, and that was a way of looking at buying homes. That I like, again, it's another Davism, but... Um, San Francisco is just nothing but age and old buildings. And how do you put this into perspective, especially when you have a nervous buyer? So one of my uh, comments would be simply this, that when you buy a new car, you get exactly that. You get a new car. When you buy a house, especially in a place like San Francisco, you are in effect buying a piece of history. And you're about to become the next caretaker in a long line of people that have already come and gone. And if all goes as planned, you're going to be the next one, the next caretaker of this property. And five, seven, ten years from now, whenever, you're going to sell this. And when you do, you're going to leave a little bit of yourself here, just like everyone else did. And this just goes on and on indefinitely. And if you look at it that way, I think it makes it a little bit easier. It simplifies it as to, okay, I get it. As the new caretaker of this piece of history of this old house in San Francisco, what do I have to do to keep it up and running? What's the minimum? And if you focus on keeping it weather tight, and deal with any safety-related issues. The rest of it now really is nothing much more than San Francisco charm. The Philosopher Inspector. There you go. Thank you so much for coming on our podcast. Thanks for having me. Thanks, this Dave. Fun. Ask Her Out Loud is a weekly podcast about San Francisco real estate from the Jackson Fuller team, San Francisco realtors since 2002. Show notes with links are at jacksonfuller.com. Wow.